Welcome to the Man of Recaps. This is all seven seasons of Arrow, leading up to the eighth and final season. Five years ago, billionaire Oliver Queen's yacht sunk in the South China Sea, and he spent five years trapped on an island before being rescued. Now he's home in Starling City after a shave and a shower. Oh, that's why people like this show. He takes one of his company's abandoned warehouses and builds a nightclub there as a cover. But in the basement, he's built an epic CrossFit gym. He does spend five minutes of any episode working out, and it's also his superhero secret hideout, he's come back from the island incredibly good at archery. What happened on that island? You'll be asking yourself that for seven seasons. Every episode, there's a few minutes of a flashback that reveals the mystery little by little. But the first thing we learn is Oliver's got this notebook with a list of names in it. His father gave it to him like, hey, these are all bad people. You need to survive and get home to save the city. Then he shoots himself so Oliver has enough food and water to survive. So Oliver dons the hood and roughs up bad guys. Leo Mueller. You have failed this city. He's basically Batman mixed with Hawkeye. He's got a little sister, Thea, a best friend, Tommy Merlin, but the person he's most excited to see is his girlfriend, Laurel. Ex-girlfriend, because she thought he was dead for five years. Also, she's not happy to see him because on the yacht, he took her sister, who he was cheating on her with, and she died in the crash, so Laurel's doubly mad at him. Laurel's dad, Detective Lance, hates Oliver too and is chasing down the vigilante, but Arrow's always one step ahead and gets him the evidence he needs. Oliver's got a new bodyguard, John Diggle, ex-Special Forces, great guy. It's like, hey man, you can handle yourself, I could use a sidekick. Diggle's like, yo, never call me a sidekick, but he joins the team. One day, Master Assassin Deadshot's in town. They help him find Deadshot, and he gets his computer, and he takes it to Felicity Smoke. She's a computer genius working at Queen Consolidated. He comes to her with tech stuff and increasingly flimsy excuses for why there's bullet holes. Pretty soon, she joins Team Arrow officially. It's difficult for her to get work done with all of her working out nonstop. This would be a hostile work environment if he wasn't so damn hot. He lives in a mansion with his mom, Moira Queen. Turns out she's working with the bad guy. He is Malcolm Merlin, Tommy Merlin's dad. So Merlin sends out his own archer with black arrows. They have a bow and arrow battle. Who is this guy? Turns out it's Malcolm Merlin himself. But Arrow bugged the office and hears everything. He now knows Merlin's the bad guy. His mom's in on it. And turns out the yacht sinking wasn't an accident. His dad tried to stop the undertaking. So Merlin and put a bomb on it. That's as good a segue as any to recap season one of The Island. Oliver met an old Asian man there, Yao Fei, who helped him survive at the beginning, but Oliver got captured by a mercenary group. Oliver escapes and finds the crashed plane where he meets Slade Wilson. Slade is a badass Australian special forces dude. So he starts teaching Oliver sword fighting and they bust into the camp. He kills his old partner and they rescue Yao Fei and daughter. Her name is Shadow and she teaches Oliver archery, starting with slapping bowl of water to make your hand strong enough. Anyway, they're all captured again, and we learn Fire's mission is to start a war by shooting down a passenger plane. Oliver escapes just in time to reprogram the missile, miss the plane, and blow up the whole mercenary camp. It comes down to a final arrow shot for Shadow's life, and Oliver makes it. Yeah, they're still trapped on the island, though. So back in the present, Oliver Bake kidnaps himself with Diggle's help to get his mom to spill the beans about the undertaking. Turns out they're going to level the glades, the bad part of town, with an earthquake machine. Merlin's wife was killed there in a mugging, so now he's deranged. They meet on the roof for a final archery battle, and he does the trick from the first Avengers where he hits him with an explosive arrow, stabs Merlin through his own shoulder, and Merlin is dead. Or is he? They find the earthquake machine and manage to disarm it, but there was a second one? Oh no, the Glades is getting earthquaked! Laurel ends up trapped under some rubble, but Tommy Merlin comes to save her. There's been a whole love triangle thing because she and Oliver still love each other, but she's been dating Tommy, but at the end, she and Oliver get back together. It's Tommy who saves her now, though, but then, oh, he's trapped under rubble, and he's got a thing through the heart. Bow and Arrow can't fix this. Oliver's best friend dies in his arms. At the end of season one, the Arrow failed to save Starling City, and the Glades was leveled by Malcolm Merlin's earthquake machine. Last season, they just called him the Vigilante, but now he's officially named the Arrow, and he's got an awesome new grappling hook, Arrow. Whoosh! the love of his life, Laurel Lance, ends things between them. In fact, Laurel blames the arrow for Tommy's death. She sets him up in a trap and gets the cops to capture him. Things look bad for our hero, but what's this? A girl superhero with a sonic emitter thing? She helps Oliver escape. Who is this girl? Well, she's wearing a blonde wig to cover up her blonde hair. It's Sarah Lance, Laurel's sister that Oliver cheated on her with, took her on the yacht, and we thought she drowned. So these two start hooking up again, but Sarah's being hunted by the League of Assassins.
friends. At some point, she joined them. That's where she learned to fight. But she quit without permission, so they're here to take her back or kill her. Now, over the season, there's a ton of random villains, but the most important subplot involves Oliver's partner, John Diggle, and the Suicide Squad. Amanda Waller is the head of Argus, a super secret spy agency. Diggle's ex-wife, Lila, works for them, and one day she's captured in Russia, he's gotta go save her, with help from his arch nemesis, Deadshot. Deadshot's the hitman that killed Diggle's brother, but they've gotta work together to escape. And Dick and Lila are back together for good. Now remember, Oliver's secret hideout is under his nightclub, Verdant. His sister, Thea Queen, is running it now, and she's still dating Roy, the guy who stole her purse in season one. He turned out to be super hot, though, so they ended up dating. He's renounced his criminal ways. He wants to be a vigilante now. So the Arrow takes him under his wing, and Roy officially joins Team Arrow. Now it's time for the trial of Oliver's mother, Moira Queen. She's miraculously found not guilty because the jury was paid by Malcolm Merlin. She's like, how are you alive? We saw you die last season. He's like, yo, no one ever really dies on this show. And he drops a crazy truth bomb. Turns out these two had an affair and he's Thea's real father. Now Moira Queen is also running for mayor and one of her donors is mother effin Slade Wilson. How did this happen? It's time for an island flashback. Remember, Slade was on the island with Oliver. They became best friends. Yao Fei's daughter, Shadow, was with them too. Uh, she and Oliver eventually started hooking up, which was sad because Slade was in love with her. Turns out, Sarah survived the yacht sinking and was picked up by this random prison ship. The prison boat captain is Dr. Ivo. He's searching for the World War II Japanese super soldier serum, Mirakuru. Long story short, Oliver and Sarah escape and they get there first, find the Mirakuru. And when the prison ship bombed their camp, oh, Slade was grievously injured. They injected him with the Mirakuru, hoping to save his life, but it seems like it didn't work. So Ivo captured them and was real mad. He's like, hey, I'm gonna kill either Shadow or Sarah. Oliver, you choose. When push came to shove, Oliver jumped in front of Sarah, so Ivo shot and killed Shadow. But Slade woke up. The Mirakuru worked. Not only healed him, but it gave him super strength. And he's real mad about Shadow's death. He finds Ivo, who explains how Shadow died, and convinces Slade it was Oliver's fault. But in the end, it's a fight to the death because between Slade and Oliver, and Oliver manages to stab him through the eye. Apparently though, Slade survived, and things are awkward between them. Slade's like, I'm not gonna kill your kid, not till he's taken away everything Oliver loves. Finally though, he captures Oliver, and reenacts the shadow death scene, makes Oliver choose between his mother and his sister. But Moira makes the choice for him, she's like, please don't hurt my children, and Slade kills her! Oh, Oliver's mom, dead! Slade's official supervillain name, by the way, is Deathstroke. They're using Slade's Mirakuru blood to create an army of super soldiers. Then it's the final showdown between Team Arrow and the Mirakuru man. Boom, boom, arrows everywhere. They actually manage not to kill anyone. They have like a million antidotes. And in the end, the good guys won. Season three begins with Team Arrow kicking butt. Oliver Queen's still the arrow and Roy's wearing red. They call him Arsenal. John Diggle's running support. And of course, Felicity Smoke on the computer. The Black Canary comes back to town. Laurel's sister, Sarah Lance, but she sees someone unexpected expected and oh get shot with arrows off the building she is all the way dead then Nissa Al Ghul comes in she was Sarah's friend slash lover in the League of Assassins she has a suspect in mind Malcolm Merlin yeah that's right he's still alive Malcolm Merlin confesses he does know who killed Sarah because it's Oliver's sister Thea he's been teaching her to fight and she's come a long way in a very short period of time Malcolm made her do it with a brainwash drug because the League of Assassins was after him so he's hoping that now they'll be after her and Oliver will challenge them to a duel to save his sister, thereby also clearing Malcolm's name. A very convoluted plan, but long story short, Oliver either kills Ra's al Ghul or dies. Either way, Malcolm's happy. So Oliver meets Ra's al Ghul, the demon's head, leader of the League of Assassins. He lies and confesses to Sarah's murder and demands a trial by combat. Think that, boom, shirtless mountaintop sword fight. But Ra's has Oliver way outclassed. He stabs him right in the chest and kicks him off the mountain. Oh my God. Yeah, Oliver is definitely all the way dead, right? Nope, he's back to life. They John snowed him, and they never really explain it, except that he was drinking some tea. Like, that's some really good tea. Back in Starling City, Merlin gives Team Arrow the bad news that Oliver's probably dead, but there's no time to mourn. A new crime boss has risen up. He's this British guy, Brick. Team Arrow's gotta take him down without Oliver, but with Laurel Lance taking up her sister's mantle of the Black Canary. Long story short, Team Arrow rallies the city behind them, and it's a giant street fight 
and Oliver gets back to town just in time to be like, well, guess you didn't need me. So the League of Assassins is still after Merlin, and now Oliver. Oliver finally brings Thea in on the secret, I'm the arrow. She's like, oh, that explains so much. Eventually, though, Oliver is captured by the League, but Roz doesn't want to kill him. He wants Oliver to take his place and become the next Roz al Ghul. What? But Oliver has no interest in giving up his life to lead an assassin's guild. To ruin Oliver's life and force his hand, Roz dresses up as the Arrow and shoots the mayor. So the cops are hunting Team Arrow for reals, and Oliver has no choice but to turn himself in. Except while he's in custody, the Arrow shows up to turn himself in. It's Roy Harper pretending to be the Arrow. They faked his death in order to take the heat off of Oliver. So Roz al Ghul goes to Plan B, which is to kill Thea. This forces Oliver's hand. In exchange for joining the League and becoming Roz al Ghul, they'll put her in the magic hot tub and boom, Thea back to life. Felicity tries to talk Oliver out of it with sex. Yeah, full Oliver's happening. These two get it on. But in the end, Oliver has no choice and he joins the League of Assassins. Roz wants Oliver to take the Omega super virus and destroy Starling City. Oliver's actually seen this virus before. It's time for an island flashback. Except this time we're not on Lian Yu. We're on the island of Hong Kong. At the end of last season, Amanda Waller of Argus rescued him from the shipwreck. She was watching the island and is impressed with his skills. And as Oliver Queen's already dead, he makes a perfect black ops spy. So he does some Mission Impossible stuff, though he's no Tom Cruise quite yet. His partner here was this guy Maseo with his wife Tatsu and their kid. He was hunting the triad leader with the white hair. She had the virus back then. And long story short, Oliver and Maseo caught it from her. This US general's like, congrats son, you saved the world. But turns out he's a bad guy wants to deploy the virus. So Oliver puts a stop to that, but not before one vial got released, kills a bunch of people, including Maseo and Tatsu's son. This made Maseo so sad, he left his wife and joined the League of Assassins. And Oliver was also sad, he tortures this general to death, embracing his inner darkness. Back in the present, turns out Oliver's not really brainwashed, he's secretly working with Malcolm Merlin, so Merlin brings the team over to stop the super virus, then Oliver has his final sword fight with Ra's al Ghul, boom, epic sword fight. But this time, Oliver beats him, yeah! Of course, that's what Ra's wanted, hands over the ring and dies. Now Oliver is the Ra's al Ghul, but Oliver still doesn't want it. He made a deal to give it to Malcolm Merlin. Uh, hopefully that doesn't come back to bite him. Then Oliver's like, hey, Team Arrow, you guys are great. You don't need me anymore. I'm going to retire. And he confesses his love to Felicity. Season four begins with Oliver Queen retired. He's with Felicity now. Some people call them Olicity, but I only say Phil Oliver. He's left the city in good hands, specifically his ex-girlfriend and little sisters. And John Diggle has finally given in and gotten a superhero name, he's Spartan. But there's a new gang in town called the Ghosts, and they have Team Arrow outgunned. Their leader is Damien Dark. He's half friendly businessman and half scary mob boss. So Phil Oliver leaves their life of suburban bliss and heads back to Starling City, or uh, Star City now. Anyway, it's time for Oliver to suit up. This time, he's leaving the sleeves behind. Now remember last season, the Arrow was wanted, so Roy put on the Arrow suit and faked his death to take the heat off Oliver. So even though Oliver is wearing the exact same outfit minus the sleeves, he's pretending to be a totally new superhero. The Green Arrow. Yeah, but no one's buying it. Anyway, the Green Arrow fights Damien Dark, but Damien Dark's got magic. That's gonna be a problem. But first, Thea Queen is overly violent these days. It's probably pit fever, a side effect of being resurrected by the Lazarus Pit. Laurel's like, wait a second, you're telling me the League of Assassins has a magic jacuzzi that can bring people back to life? Why haven't we used this on my sister Sarah yet? And it works, Sarah's back to life. It's gonna be awkward having two Black Canaries now. Luckily, Sarah's not sticking around because it leads into a new spinoff show, Legends of Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Back to Star City, anyone running for mayor gets shot at because Damien Dark doesn't want a mayor. Oliver has to keep saving him, so he figures cut out the middleman. He runs for mayor himself. So when Oliver proposes to Felicity, Dark sends his men to shoot up the limo, and oh no, Felicity's hit. Felicity is paralyzed. She's in a wheelchair now. Luckily, her superpower is sitting at a computer, so they install a ramp and we're good to go. Thea's pit fever is getting worse. The only way she can stop it is by killing people, and she 
she doesn't want to do that, so she might die, but Nyssa comes with an option. She's got some sort of magic healing potion, but she'll only help if Malcolm Merlin gives her control of the League of Assassins. So they're gonna fight for it, but Oliver fights Malcolm Merlin in her place, and he cuts off his hand to get the demon head ring. Sophia gets cured, and Nyssa realizes the League of Assassins is kind of evil, so she disbands it. Merlin is pissed at Oliver now, so he joins up with Damien Dark. He tells Dark an epic secret. Oliver has a son? Yeah, he only just found out too. It's a random girl he knocked up in college that his mom paid to cover it up and move away. So Dark kidnaps Oliver's son. Oliver calls in a superhero friend, Vixen. She steals Dark's magic totem. Turns out that's what gives him his powers. So when she destroys it, oh, he's vulnerable and Arrow takes him down. But Felicity feels betrayed that Oliver didn't tell her about his son. So betrayed that she calls off the engagement for Oliver no. And just then, and she can walk again? It's a miracle! Actually, no, it's science. She's got an employee at Palmer Tech, this brilliant guy, Curtis. She comes to him sometimes with Team Arrow stuff and flimsy explanations, just like Oliver did to her back in season one. Anyway, he invented some sort of spinal implant that's letting her walk again. Now, Dark's magic idol, Oliver's actually seen before. That's right, it's time for an island flashback. This season, it's a true island flashback. Argus's next mission for secret agent Oliver sends him back to Lee Ann you. He's here to take down a group of bad guys who are growing drugs or something, led by Baron Ryder. He pretends to join them, but when he's supposed to kill this one girl, he lets her go because he's a good guy. They eventually realize he's a spy and whip him for a while, but Constantine gave Oliver a magic tattoo that Baron Ryder needs to enter the secret cave. That's the reason he's here. And inside is Damien Dark's idol. It's powered by killing people and drawing their strength to give you magic powers. Long story short, Oliver and the girl escape, but she takes the idol, it gives her magic powers, so she's able to take down Ryder but it's making her evil, so she's like, Oliver, you have to kill me. Now, Dark's organization is called Hive, which is the group that Deadshot told John Diggle killed his brother. But one day they capture a Hive guy, and it is John Diggle's brother. Yeah, they didn't kill him, they recruited him. Diggle's real mad, but turns out Hive uses brainwashing pills to control their people, so when it wears off, Diggle starts to trust his brother again. So when Dark's breaking out of prison, Team Arrow brings little Diggle with him, and he betrays them. Yeah, he wasn't brainwashed, he's just a bad guy. So with the missing piece, Dark's got his magic powers back, and he uses them to kill Laurel Lance. No, Laurel, you can't die. No one ever really dies on this show, except Laurel does. This is actually good news for Quentin Lance, because he does his best acting when one of his daughters dies. That's why they have it happen at least once a season. Then Dark goes to John Diggle's wife, Lila, and takes her Argus implant. By the way, Amanda Waller was killed earlier this season, so Lila's the new head of Argus. So Diggs' little brother crossed a line going after John's family, and John kills him. He feels emo about it for a while. Somehow the Argus implant gives Dark access to all the world's nuclear weapons. His evil master plan is Project Genesis. He's gonna nuke the world and ride it out in this giant underground city he's made. Green Arrow finds Dark's underground city and long story short, blows it up. But now it's the final battle with Damien Dark and his magic's gonna kick Oliver's butt. But Star City rises up to help him. So Dark brings all his minions and there's a big city brawl. I feel like this exact scene happens in every season. So in the end, Oliver defeats Damien Dark. He doesn't kill people anymore, but he makes an exception and oh, kills him. Dark defeated. In season five, Oliver Queen is now the mayor of Star City, but at night he still puts on the hood and beats up bad guys. Team Arrow is now just him and Felicity, who finally gets her own superhero name, Overwatch. His sister Thea's done with the vigilante life, and John Diggle quit too to rejoin the army for some reason. There's a couple new vigilantes in town that Team Arrow could recruit, so meet the new Team Arrow. Rene Ramirez is Wild Dog. He's the renegade that doesn't follow orders. You remember Curtis. He's already half on Team Arrow, helping Felicity with computer stuff. But now he goes out in the field as Mr. Terrific. Pretty soon, John Diggle comes back. There's a corrupt general trying to frame him for stuff, and Oliver's got to break him out of prison. It's a whole thing. And also coming back is Laurel Lance. I told you no one stays dead on this show. Apparently, she was rescued by the Legends of Tomorrow, because they're doing all sorts of time travel stuff. But turns out the truth is even crazier. She's the supervillain Black Siren. 
Laurel's evil doppelganger from the parallel Earth 2. You can blame the Flash for that one. He gets into all sorts of multiverse shenanigans. In any case, evil Laurel makes it clear that she's bad to the bone. No chance of a redemption arc, at least not till next season. Now there is a girl on this Earth who got the Black Canary screen power. It's badass ex-cop Dinah Drake. Long story short, the Arrow recruits her and they've got a new Black Canary. So Oliver gets all these new recruits trained up and now Team Arrow is pretty huge. But turns out the real villain this season is Prometheus. The Green Arrow is mine. His beef with the Arrow is personal. His father was one of the corrupt businessmen that Oliver killed in season one. Eventually, we learn Prometheus' identity. He's new district attorney Adrian Chase, who's actually been friends with Oliver. Chase captures Oliver and tortures him for a bit. He doesn't want to kill him. He wants to break him. So he makes Oliver admit to himself that he enjoys killing. And I liked it! So now feeling totally broken, Oliver disbands Team Arrow and turns to an old friend, Anatoly of the Bratva. We learned Oliver was part of the Russian mob back in season one. How the heck did that happen anyway? It's time for an island flashback. Last season, he promised this girl that he would save her village by killing some bad guy. So this season's island flashback takes place in Russia. Oliver meets up with his Russian best friend, Anatoly, who he met on the prison ship back on season two. Long story short, Anatoly vouches for him and Oliver joins the Bratva. The guy he needs to kill is Konstantin Kovar, played by Dolph Lundgren. But turns out this one Bratva captain is working for Kovar, so Oliver finds himself in the middle of a Bratva civil war. But now Oliver is fully Jason Bourne John Wick badass, takes out all the guys, sometimes while wearing the hood. Kovar almost gasses the Russian government and takes over, but Oliver puts a stop to that and kills him. So now Oliver is finally ready to go home. He has Anatoly drop him off back on Li Han Yu. He's gonna pretend he was shipwrecked here the whole time instead of being a super spy. And so finally, the island flashbacks have caught up to season one. Meanwhile, Felicity makes a new friend. It's a young hacktivist, just like she was. She's part of a super hacker group called Helix, and she'll help Felicity get Prometheus in exchange for Felicity helping Helix rescue their leader, Caden James. More on him next season. And so they find the evidence they need to put Adrian Chase away. But turns out that's all part of his plan. His friends on the outside kidnap all of Oliver's friends, including his son, William. So to keep them safe, Oliver's gotta break Adrian out of prison and let him get away. Now, anytime Thea's in danger, you know who shows up. It's Malcolm Merlin. And they fly off for the final showdown on Lee and Yu. Oliver recruits another old enemy here, Mother F and Slade Wilson. He's had a long time now to sober up from his Marakuru madness. He apologizes for killing Oliver's mom and stuff. So Slade Wilson's a good guy again. Together, they rescue Oliver's friends. Thea has a complicated relationship with her father. She mostly hates him because he's evil. But when she steps on a landmine, Merlin knocks her off and takes her place. He stays behind so they can get away and blows himself up. No, Merlin. Thea, don't cry. I don't believe for one second that he's gonna stay dead. If nothing else, he can always cameo on Legends of Tomorrow. Now, Prometheus is crazy. His whole thing is that he wants Oliver to kill him to prove that he's a killer. But he's rigged explosives to go off when he dies, covering the entire island. So Oliver has to choose between all of his friends and family or the son that he barely knows. A difficult dilemma to be sure, but Oliver cheats by shooting Prometheus in the foot. Smart move, that would have worked, but Prometheus shoots himself and boom, all of Lee and you explode explodes, killing everyone on the show. Uh, luckily though, most people did survive. In fact, the only death is Oliver's baby mama, so he's suddenly a single dad. By the way, full Oliver is back on. In fact, they get married this season. Oliver wants to spend more time with his family, so he retires and passes the hood to John Diggle. I'm the Green Arrow. Problem is, Dig's not much of an archer, so they make him a sweet crossbow that's close enough to a gun. He's very good with it. And now it's time for this season's villain, super hacker Caden James. Oliver suits back up to take him down, but he's recruited a whole squad of super villains. One of the villains on the Caden James squad is Vigilante, who we met last season. But turns out Dinah Drake knows him. It's her murdered former partner slash lover. Turns out he's a good guy working to take James down from the inside. So these two are romancing again, but he soon gets caught and also working for Caden James is Evil Laurel, the Black Siren. Dinah watches helplessly as she yells into his head, exploding his brain. Now, Caden James is doing all this because the Green
Green Arrow killed his son, but turns out that was fake too. Caden James realizes one of his own squad has been manipulating him, so who's the evil mastermind behind this whole thing? It's Ricardo Diaz, the dragon. He's a soft-spoken kind of guy, so no one suspected him, but he's got big plans. Why destroy a city when you could take it over? He kills Caden James, which is too bad because Star City's in desperate need of the $70 million he ransomed. They find his account, but it's already been withdrawn by evil Laurel. She almost got away on bomb night, but Dinah came for vengeance and they had a black canary battle. Dinah ends up shooting her, but her fake father, Quentin Lance, was there and half rescues, half kidnaps her. Evil Laurel has consistently shown that she's bad to the bone. It became Quentin's personal quest to force a redemption arc on her. He makes a deal with all her, where she'll give back the money if he helps her escape the country. But before they can, new Team Arrow shows up and Dinah wants her revenge. So it's a Team Arrow civil war. They have an epic fight, but Oliver lays the smack down. Evil Laurel escapes, but she comes right back pretending to be real Laurel, which is awkward. Turns out someone stole the money from her stash. It was Ricardo Diaz. Green Arrow tracks him down, but can't arrest him. He's used the 70 million to buy the police department. He's He's also the one who's been trying to get Oliver in prison. In fact, he's got a new star witness, it's Roy Harper. With her ex-boyfriend in danger, Thea Queen suits back up and immediately kisses him. Luckily, he's not seeing anyone. These two decide that they're in love and are gonna ride off into the sunset, but they're stopped by ninjas. Turns out Merlin found three new Lazarus pits. Thea figures it's her responsibility to help take them out, so she leaves the show to do that. Then it's time for Oliver Queen's trial. It's not looking good for him, because of course the judge is bought by Diaz, but the Green Arrow busts in to testify. Who's wearing the hood? It's Tommy Merlin! He died, of course, at the end of season one, but his story is that he faked his death to go full-time Green Arrow. But it's not really him. It's a professional face changer guy they hired. So Diaz goes to plan B, which is just murder Oliver and everyone he cares about. So Oliver makes a deal with FBI lady. The FBI comes in full force to liberate Star City, which is probably their job in the first place, right? So the cavalry busts in, Green Arrow and Diaz have their final rooftop battle, and at the end it's the same old dilemma, to stop me you're gonna have to kill me. Black Siren comes and is like, yeah, I'm fine with that. Boom! Blasts him off the roof. But crazily, he survives. Quentin Lance, though, actually dies, and he and Oliver have a really emotional talk about how proud of him he is now, so I believe he might actually stay dead. Then, as part of the deal Oliver made with the FBI, he's gotta turn himself in. He has a big Iron Man press conference. I am the Green Arrow. In season seven, Oliver Queen is in prison. This is not a bad thing. He actually has a lot more time to work out now. On the outside, Felicity Smoke has pink hair now. She and William are in Argus protective custody because they're hiding from Ricardo Diaz who finds them no problem. She helps Argus track him down, but Diaz is now working with the super assassins, the Longbow Hunters. He hires some guys in prison to try to kill Oliver in a naked shower fight. Oliver talks to Brick, the villain from season three, in order to find out that Diaz's contact is the demon down on level two. So Oliver has to stab some guards to get himself sent down there, and level two's really awful. It's run by a crazy psychiatrist who's like doing experiments on the prisoners. Finally, Oliver meets the demon. It's Talia al Ghul. She and Oliver were friends in the Russia flashback, but enemies when she was helping Prometheus. They agree to be friends again for now to help each other escape. Oliver steals the data, gives it to Talia because he's gotta stay in prison if he doesn't wanna be a fugitive. So she gets out, exposes the illegal experiments, and Oliver's back to his regular maximum security security prison cell. On the outside, Diaz stole some super bomb and the team's gotta shut it down with help from the new Green Arrow? Yeah, someone else has been running around the city in the hood. You have failed the city. And with help from him, they take down Diaz. Felicity considers going dark side and killing him, but evil Laurel comes to stop her. Not out of any moral qualms, but because they can use him to get a deal to get Oliver out of prison. She's trying to be not evil this season. She backslides for one episode, but all the girls have an intervention and her redemption arc is complete. She plans to go home to Earth 2 and right her wrongs as the Black Canary. On the day Oliver's set to be released, Diaz escapes and takes over the prison, so Oliver pulls some MacGyver 
moves and busts out of his cell. Long story short, kicks his butt and is released from prison a free man. Dinah Drake is the police captain now, and vigilantism is still illegal, but sometimes they need Oliver's help. So they make the Green Arrow an official member of the SCPD, and they send him out there with no mask because everyone knows he's Oliver Queen now. But the cops are still hunting the new Green Arrow. No one knows who he is. In fact, it's a girl. She works out even harder than Oliver. She's on a mission to hunt down her mother's killer, but turns out her father is Robert Queen. Yeah, she's Oliver's half-sister. His dad had a whole secret family he abandoned. Speaking of family, Oliver's still got a son, William. They're constantly in danger from one bad guy or another, so they decide to send him off to live with his grandparents. But his story continues in an island flash forward. My father is Oliver Queen. After years of no contact, Felicity sends him to Lee Ann Yu, where he finds Roy Harper. We never learn why Roy was here. They go back to Star City, which is now a dystopian wasteland, except for the Glades, traditionally the bad neighborhood, now a really nice place, under the leadership of Mayor Wild Dog Rene Ramirez. They meet up with Dinah Drake, now leader of the vigilante resistance group, the Canaries, one of whom is a grown-up Zoe, Renee's daughter. They also meet badass cage fighter Blackstar, who is Felicity. Felicity's daughter and has an epic theme song. Because my name is Mia Smoke. Anyway, the kids break into an evil corporation and rescue Felicity, and they have to stop a plot to blow up Star City. Long story short, the kids have an epic adventure, bringing down the walls to the glades and saving the city. Back in the present, Argus is hunting a supervillain financier named Dante. Turns out he's the leader of the Ninth Circle, another ancient secret villain organization. But turns out he's working with Emiko Queen! Oliver soon finds out his half-sister's evil, so they have a sibling fight. He drops a knowledge bomb on her. Turns out Dante killed her mother! So she kills him, but she doesn't turn good. Turns out she was the actual leader of the Ninth Circle. So Emiko stole some super bioweapon and is gonna use drones to spray it on the city. Oliver has a final showdown with his half-sister, but instead of fighting, he convinces her to be a good guy. Emiko pulls a Darth Vader and dies having been redeemed. Then Oliver blows up the old Queen Consolidated building and the city is saved. Then Oliver retires for good. He and Felicity move to the country because... Felicity's preggers! Full Oliver lives happily ever after in montage form until one night there's a random sci-fi dude in their kitchen. Yeah, the big crossover event this season was Elseworlds where they deal with a lot of multiverse stuff. Long story short, Oliver made a promise that he would save the multiverse in the crisis on infinite Earths. Bad news though, it's set in stone that to save the multiverse, Oliver has to die. That's a bummer. So Oliver and Felicity say farewell as he leaves to save the multiverse. Then in the future, flash forward, Felicity Felicity says goodbye to the kids as she leaves with the monitor too. And that's how Arrow Season 7 comes to an end.